Well, let's begin here with next weather meteorologist Lisette Gonzalez with what this new advisory is saying. Lisette, any yeah, big Idalia changes? is now a hurricane and expected to rapidly intensify into a dangerous major category three hurricane by tomorrow morning. But as of 5 a.m., we just got the update from the National Hurricane Center. Max sustained winds increasing to 75 miles per hour. Hence, it is now classified a hurricane. It's, it's becoming better organized. It's moving to the north at 14 miles an hour and forecast to continue moving over the very warm waters here of the Gulf of Mexico, which will help to fuel it and also provide the energy for this to intensify into a major category three hurricane. By the time we get into tomorrow morning before it makes landfall somewhere along the Big Bend here of Florida, it will continue to track northeast. Still a cat one hurricane, by the way, even in through tomorrow evening, and then the impacts will be felt across the southeastern United States as it'll become a tropical storm and eventually continue to weaken and head off into the Atlantic by the time we get into the end of the week and into the weekend. In the meantime, though, the satellite imagery is looking a lot more impressive this morning as we're seeing the convection is becoming a lot more organized and concentrated more in the center, and this is going to continue to strengthen as it's moving over some record warm sea surface temperatures here. So as we look at the watches and warnings, we're seeing that hurricane warnings are in effect for much of the Gulf Coast of our state as well as storm surge warning. That's one of the biggest concerns. And as we take a closer look closer to home, we do have that tropical storm watch, which is in effect for the lower keys. And that's from Key West to the Seven Mile Bridge. We also have tropical storm warnings in effect for the dry Tortugas. In terms of storm surge, we could see life threatening storm surge along the Big Bend there, uh, anywhere from eight to 12 feet of storm surge. Add to that the fact that we have king tides and also we're close to a full moon for us in the Keys. Storm surge of one to two feet, but for more on our local impacts here in South Florida, we have Casey Sherman with us. Yeah, thankfully, and for us here in South Florida, it's not going to be a major event. We're going to be avoiding the main impacts that'll stay off well to the north and west of us, but we will still feel some fringe impacts beginning today. Gusty bands of rain will be pushing on shore throughout the day today and into tomorrow. It's going to be uh, the main time frame of impacts. Rainfall looking at about one to two inches on average, but where we see any of these training bands of rain, we could be looking at some locally heavier amounts breezy to uh, windy conditions with some gusts between 35 to 45 miles per hour slightly higher possible down in the lower keys where they have that tropical storm watch in effect storm surge possible of one to two feet down in the lower keys as well so keep that in mind today is going to be just a breezy day to weather with those passing rain bands we're also continuing to have to track uh, what should be the potential of seeing some weak tropical spin ups heading into the remainder of this afternoon as those bands continue to push on shore right now we're fairly dry. We've got a couple showers down through the lower keys right now. Look at how quickly they're moving. Gusts have already been picking up. Notice we already have wind gusts down and up to uh, over 30 miles per hour down near Key West at the moment. Not so much here in Miami, Dade or Broward County, but we are anticipating those to start to increase as we head throughout the day. Here come some of those outer bands arriving as we into this afternoon. They'll continue to push on shore as we head into this evening and through your Wednesday.